Sing to the Lord a new song, a song of hope and rejoicing. Praise God for wonderful acts of mercy and kindness. God has remembered God's faithful ones. God has poured blessing upon blessing upon us. Praise the Lord, all the earth. Shout Mm -hmm. your praise. Rejoice, for God is truly with us. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Easter is such a wonderful season, Lord. Hope springs anew in our hearts. As the earth is being refreshed by the warmth of spring, so we have been refreshed and made new by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to stay in this euphoria forever. But you have called us to go into the valley, to those who need to hear of your love and to feel your caring presence. In his words of hope, Jesus prepared his disciples to be witnesses We have heard these words before, but far too often we have turned our backs to this message. We don't quite believe that we are capable of actually living our whole lives in your love. So we act in ways that are often neglectful and hurtful of others. We take more time pampering ourselves than we do helping other people. It is easier to justify our selfish desires than it is to witness to your transforming love. Stop us in our tracks, O Lord. Turn us around. Help us to face our weakness and our your forgiving grace. Heal us of our sins and place us again on the paths of peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The commandment that we have from Christ Jesus is that we love one another, treating each other as beloved brothers and sisters. Abide in God's eternal love. Let us let its power and joy penetrate your hearts and spirits preparing you for new growth in the Spirit. Amen.
you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is taken from Acts chapter 10. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So we ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with equity. Years ago, I watched a movie called Dogma. It was an extremely irreverent movie about a young woman who was said to be the next savior sent by God. She was hunted by rogue angels and demons as she and her companions went to locate two exiled angels that were threatening the integrity of the heavenly authority. It was a rather strange movie and quite controversial. In one of the opening scenes of the movie, a representative of the Catholic Church introduced the rebranding campaign that the church was undergoing. The research showed that everyone found the old images of the crucifix and the crucified Christ upsetting. So they introduced their new vision of Christ, Body Christ. A smiling Jesus giving you the thumbs up and a friendly charismatic wink. Now, the premise of Body Christ is rather ridiculous. 
But that was the whole point. The church in the movie was trying to market itself differently by turning its back on keystone parts of its narrative. Their faith had to be accessible, non-threatening, and easy. And in the end, as the movie made very clear, the church simply felt like a mockery of itself. Yet the movie did pose an interesting question. Are we so entrenched in our doctrine and our images that we are totally inaccessible to anyone who is on the outside looking in? When, we do, when they do see Jesus on the cross or hear us talking about eating the body and drinking the blood of Christ, what do people think? Or what about someone rising from the dead after three days in a tomb or honoring the day of our Savior's death as the most important day in history? Or what about baptizing either infants or adults in water and calling them clean from sin forever? Or what about the idea that although God created us and loves us, God is transcendent, existing well beyond us in our little corner of reality. We understand this, we think, or at the very least we are used to this language, even if we don't totally understand it. But how do outsiders respond to this language that is seemingly opaque? And how do we respond to it if we are being honest with ourselves? We know that those ideas are important, we may even find ourselves repeating these ideas in conversation with others. But do we understand it when we say something like, we are washed clean in the, body, in the blood of, of the Lamb, or the kingdom of God is both now and not now, or even the idea that Jesus is truly present in the bread and wine of communion? It is interesting that a silly, irreverent movie from 25 years ago can help ask some important questions. What does our language say about us as a people of faith? Are we exclusive or inclusive? And how can we find that balance so that we don't lose the essence of who we are in a rush to become more accessible? We don't want to take on the buddy Christ icon, but we also cannot become so siloed in our secret language that no one knows what we are talking about. I think that the answer lies in our gospel text for today. In it, we have Jesus, the Logos of creation, the Christ, the second person of the Trinity, represented in a gospel that is arguably the most theological, turning to those who are listening to him and calling them friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. In one brilliant moment of theological reconciliation, John has managed to do for Christianity what we have struggled to do for 2,000 years. He has managed to reconcile the eminent with the transcendent. He has managed to reconcile the Jesus with us in the trenches of our lives with the Christ, the cosmic one, who is co-eternal with the, co with the creator. They are the same person, and here John reconciles this with a few simple words. I have called you friends. Friends. Here is the Lord of creation calling his disciples and those around him friends. Not servants or valued disciples, but friends. And that is our point of entry into the mystery of God, Jesus our Savior and our friend. In theological terms, Jesus is thought of as both fully human and fully divine, not half and half, but a hundred percent of each. Mathematically, that doesn't make sense, but theologically, it is extremely important. It means that the Christ, the Holy One, the Logos, the Word of creation, and second person of the Trinity is here in our midst. And Christ is not just here, an avatar for the true divinity, just lurking under the surface of his skin, but Christ is truly present. And that is why it is so important that Jesus is also fully human. Despite all that comes with being the Christ, Jesus is flesh and blood, just as we are. He hungers and thirsts, he needs to sleep, and he laughs and he weeps. He is human, and because he is human, we can relate to him. We can connect with him. We can understand him in ways that the mysteries of God often do not convey to us. Jesus is our touch point to the greater mysteries of the divine. And it can be all boiled down to what Jesus, John states in our reading. You are my friends if you do what I command you. 
I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my Father. The divine has called us friend. The Creator God has come to us not through some great transcendent revelation, but through the mundane, everyday realities of our mortality. There is a passage from the Bhagavad Gita, a holy text in the Hindu tradition, where Krishna, an avatar of the god Vishnu, has been instructing Prince Arjuna in what constitutes a good, good life, as Arjuna faces a war that he is unsure he can win, or is even a just war. To inspire Arjuna to do his duty, Krishna reveals his divine nature as the multiple arm of Vishnu and utters the words, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Arjuna is convinced and does go forward and confronts his enemy, ultimately finding victory. Now, the Bhagavad Gita is a beautifully written book full of wisdom and worth the read, but I am struck about how different Krishna acts towards Arjuna versus how Christ acts towards us. Jesus, the Holy One, could have revealed himself to the people in a similar way. He does do it to a point during the Transfiguration event, but it wasn't his ultimate expression. Jesus' way of revealing God's love was to come to earth, to live as we do, and to die on a cross. No grand, overpowering revelation, but an act of love. The Incarnation is not a facade hiding the true nature of God. It is the ultimate expression of God's love. And it is best demonstrated through everything that Christ does in his human, mortal life. So in this simple passage from John, we find a balance that has often eluded us as Christians. On one hand, this is the divine Christ, not our buddy, as from the fictitious church from the movie Dogma. But this is also not some grand transcendent revelation or deity like Krishna with Arjuna. This is Jesus, our friend, our savior, our Lord, who lived as one of us and in so doing, showed us an expression of God's love that is timeless. It is an expression that shows us that God loves us deeply and is with us every moment, even as God is with all creation, transcendent yet as close to us as air. It is a balance, but when Jesus calls his disciples friends, we hear the divine beckoning us into a relationship. All the high-minded language and confusing theology, which over time can be understood, is less important than the reality of the Incarnation. Jesus is our entry into the mystery of the divine, and even if we never parse out the mysteries of our faith, it takes nothing from the revelation that is Jesus Christ. For through him the divine is a friend. The divine is recognized as our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. The divine is the ultimate grounding in our life, not to be cheapened into somebody Christ, but also not to be distanced from for it has come to live amongst us and claim us as its own. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus has risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word. Fill your church with the gifts of your spirit and give understanding hearts to those who strengthen our commitments with our ecumenical and interreligious partners. God of grace, hear our prayer. You speak and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation that ha habitats and every kind of living thing might flourish. Protect endangered species and help us to care for all your creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world is divided and the nations rage, O oh God. Grant wisdom and vision to world leaders that they may seek justice, peace, and the good of all. Strengthen international partnerships and cooperation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children are in need. Comfort all those who suffer, especially those afflicted by anxiety, depression, and mental illness. Help us to be conduits of your love in our care for one another. We continue to uplift in our prayers the families of Betty Dewar and the families of, family of Janet Plystead. Be with them, O Lord, in their time of grief. We also uphold all those in our midst who are suffering, people that we continually pray for, people who need your grace and healing in this time, people whom we name either now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your work is done in this place with our hands. Bless the ministries of this congregation that we may embody your love for the world, inspire the, those who plan and lead worship, council members, committee members, and volunteers. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, we give thanks for the moisture which has come for these days of rain and snow, and we ask that you continue to nourish the earth over the these summer months ahead, that crops may grow, and farmers and other agricultural workers would be allowed to see their crops flourish so they could continue their work of feeding the world. Thank you for this gift of water, and may we never take for granted the rains that come, but always give you praise for the nourishing of the earth. We also pray for all those who are now without a place of shelter as, our, as the hub has officially closed its doors, at least for now. We pray that as they seek shelter for the night, that you might be able to give them warm, dry places that can keep them safe and secure until some kind of solution can be reached here in this community. An opportunity to continue to serve that vulnerable population that is in such need of aid and comfort at this time. Help us, O oh Lord, to be instruments of your grace and love and to not forget those who are in most need. May our own inconvenience not stand in the way of doing what is right, and may we seek to support all people. God, in your of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us. At the last, bring us all together around your heavenly banquet table. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all from whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. God and community, holy and one, May we never be apart from you, even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your body love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Community garage sale took place 
yesterday, so a big thank you to all those who were involved, and a big thank you to all those who came out and supported it. And Thursday, June 6th, we will be having the Martin Kerr concert here, along with a silent auction. It is another fundraising to, fundraiser towards our flooring, which re is nearing a level where we can soon proceed with um, with certain chunks of the of the church. Our fellowship hall would likely be first, as it's a high traffic area. But where now we finally have enough to move forward with it. Um, at least in pieces, and we'll get it done as quickly and efficiently as possible. But a big thank you to everyone who has supported this campaign, and as we move ever closer to our goal, I uh, pray that you would support us in this home stretch and be able to uh, upgrade the church with brand new and lovely flooring, which will, I think, drastically change the look of this church and sp uh, freshen it up and make it a more uh, aesthetically and pleasing and a safer environment. Uh, finally, uh, we have a few birthdays to remember today. Megan Tim, Stephen Rates, Diane Roth, and Barry Clark. So let us say a word of prayer for them. God of grace and mercy, we lift up before you today Megan, Stephen, Diane, and Barry, all of whom celebrate birthdays this week. Thank you for their presence in our midst and all the gifts that they share. Bless them in their year ahead, O Lord, and help them to know that as they journey through this year, you are with them always. In joy and in sorrow, in the good times and in bad, you are there. And when things are particularly bad, help them to know that you are walking with them and that when they cannot walk anymore, you are caring. Thank you for that blessed assurance and may, them, may it give them hope and peace in the year to come. And so we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And of course, we also continue to keep in our prayers Elsie Tomaszewski and Roseanne Barkley and all those that we know of who are in need of prayer in this time. So a big thank you to everyone again. Uh, I hope you have a good and safe week ahead, and we will talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.